Today we have an iced coffee with one teaspoon of vanilla sugar, which is like how I like my black coffee. Because I haven't talked about it enough on this channel yet, I have moved house and this is my living room. It's not done yet, but we just got a sofa and I'm just enjoying it. So I thought I'd sit on it today. You can see some of the, the other stuff in my house. Having an office is very nice, but I fully intend to film in every corner of this house. We pay enough money for it. So on that note, welcome to a very casual chatty video. Grab yourself a cup of tea. I feel like the past few months so much has changed in my life. You're just watching like a whole new chapter begin. But yeah, six months ago, I came off my pill. Initially, I uploaded a three month pill update. I'll link that somewhere here. But um, yeah, I was, I was pretty chill. Like everything was going fine. Three to six months has been a journey, but we're on the other end of it now, thank God. I don't know, it's not that everything went tits up, I just had a very dodgy January, and I feel like that just threw everything off a bit. Things went slightly to the left, but now they're coming back on track, which is exactly what we need. And a six month update has been highly requested, so I've got some notes. I don't actually have too much on here, I'm hoping that like some more stuff comes to me as we chat, because actually like even from January to now, it feels like so much is like different. Like. I can't really remember what happened in January. And hi, if you're new around here, my name is Lucy Moon. I talk about fashion, beauty, lifestyle, living in London, some home stuff too. If you would like to subscribe, please do. And if you're already subscribed, then please hit the bell notification so you get a little thing every time I upload. It's not that invasive, I promise. Okay, where to begin? I think maybe we should start with the hair loss side of things. So towards the end of 2020, I noticed I was losing a bit more hair than I normally do and that is quite um, relative because for me, I have a lot of hair. So to be losing on the on the higher side of, of like losing hair actually isn't too much of a big deal. Like I'm very lucky. I just have a lot of it. <laughs> so I probably lose it relative in a relatively large sense, more so than other people. Those are not good words. But yeah, basically I was losing a bit of hair not in, a, not in a concerning way, but in a way that I just wanted to keep an eye on. Um, the average woman loses 50 to 100 hairs from her head like every day. So if that puts that into context, I can't have been losing much more than that. And I actually think in hindsight, that was due to stress. I don't know if you know what was going on in the UK at that time, I'm sure you do. I think like 40% of my audience is from the UK, but basically we were having half lockdowns, full lockdowns, tier systems, and then Christmas got canceled. And I just think all of that, and then the instating of a three month lockdown in January just absolutely fucked me up. <laughs> Basically, it just didn't do me any favors in terms of uh, my emotional and mental well-being. And when I get stressed, I do lose hair. It's just part of my body's stress response. So that was fun, really fun. Another theory I have is that being on the pill just kept my, my like, hair retention quite high and then I came off the pill and my hair just had to like have a big shed. While we're on the topic of stress we should probably talk about January as a whole because it wasn't an easy month. So in January I was more stressed than usual. We had this new and stated lockdown. I think also all the stress of the past year just caught up to me really heavily and on top of that I couldn't see Jack and it was just obviously me and Aviva in the house <laughs> for like at least a month and a half and yeah it was, it was just a lot. So something went wrong basically I think in my cycle and I was on Struggle Street. So due to all the combined stresses in January and just, I think, built up stress um, that hadn't been like properly channeled or released from the whole pandemic and everything else that's happened this year, I went into uh, the same uh, mental and emotional experiences I was having when I first came off my pill, which I said was like the horror story of coming off your pill, like everything you don't want to happen would happen. And that was also in a time of intense stress because um, I mentioned it in the previous video, but I just had a breakup. And so I was coming off the back of this sudden breakup and I was also becoming self-employed for the first time. I just graduated. It was just like this overwhelming wave of stress. <laughs> and I just didn't think anything would ever hit me that hard again. And January came and January, oh my God. <laughs> It's just really bad. I'm really glad I can laugh about it now. But basically, um, in my head, I was um, experiencing what I, I don't want to use this term lightly because uh, I know that I'm not um, bipolar, but it felt like mania. I feel incredibly intense, incredibly impulsive. I just want to say, fuck it, do everything. I can't sleep very well. Uh, my appetite goes, but I feel this like internal energy. I don't really know what, what, almost like rage, but it's not rage. I just, it just feels completely out of my control and I, it's horrid. It's like a really unpleasant experience. It makes me incredibly insular as well. I don't want to tell people what's going on, but I feel like I'm going fucking crazy. I think this is something chemical that goes on during a stressful time for me, but it feels completely alien and out of my control. 
and um, it's really scary. So I was experiencing that. Yeah, it's just really unpleasant. So um, I was doing that, whatever that was. So as you can imagine, when that was going on in my head, that also has an impact on the rest of my body. So I broke out pretty badly and my chest and back are still not recovered from that. Again, my appetite was super weird. My period was super delayed. There was just like a bunch of weird stuff going on in my body. And it made me realize that what I had been experiencing prior when I first came off my pill was definitely all related to my hormones. Like for a while I was like, maybe I've got PMDD because I was just like, I do not feel right in any way. <laughs> I don't feel like myself at all. And I did Google it and apparently you can get um, a form of PMDD where you experience um, something equivalent to mania. It feels very weird to talk about now because like I don't relate to that version of myself. Yeah, so I, I was looking into maybe it was PMDD, but then it went again. So I think it's really weird. Whatever's going on and whatever goes on in that in that time is triggered by stress. Um, but yeah, it feels a deeply unpleasant chemical thing. I'm also anxious all the time when it happens, like constant anxiety. And like that hasn't gone away. Like I'm still really anxious like all the time at the moment. There's just loads of stuff to do with like lockdown loosening and stuff that's having a general impact on my anxiety. But yeah, I've had pretty bad anxiety this whole time. Mm, not pretty bad, not good anxiety. When is anxiety ever good? I've had a consistent level of anxiety, which I had managed to avoid most of 2020 throughout the entirety of 2021. And it definitely started in January. Anyway, my body came down off of that. Once my period arrived, everything kind of just like, felt a bit better. So once my period arrived in February, which was the biggest relief, <laughs> I cannot tell you what a relief it was for that period to arrive. Um, I, I kind of felt this responsibility to really work on getting my hormones back on track because I couldn't go through that experience again. Like it was just really unpleasant. I've got my phone here, sorry, referencing uh, the notes I've made. So yeah, I've been paying a lot of attention to my cycle, trying to get things back. And sure enough, um, my last cycle was exactly 31 days, which is my, uh, between 31 and 32 is my standard now, which is great. And my period lasts four days. It's just so predictable. So yeah, I, th I think something, mm, I don't really know what happened, but I just was not okay in January and now I feel totally fine and that feels like a different person. Let's move on to acne. So as I said, uh, in January, my skin broke out pretty badly, but I've got it back on track through a few things, but specifically like using a consistent uh, like skincare routine and eating relatively well, those things definitely have an impact. And if I eat a lot of sugar or a lot of dairy, or I have a like massive, like, you know, a sender on alcohol, like that will uh, break me out which is fine, I think that's everyone's life, right? I also now think seeing myself back in that mental place that I reached last time I came off my pill and seeing the comparisons in the acne has actually been very helpful in showing which things about my diet and lifestyle were triggering some of the other acne I was having. Because I think I've spoken about this before, but I feel like I had three types. I feel like I had normal hormonal spots and then I had this huge forehead, just like lumps and bumps the entire way over. And then I had cystic acne going down my cheeks. And so I managed to avoid the forehead stuff completely and only get a few cysts. So I think the cysts are stress related, hormone, and then general hormones and lifestyle and diet is the normal, like standard predictable hormonal acne that people describe as being able to be treated and, you know, and looked after without medical intervention. And then I think the forehead stuff is related to gluten and intolerances. Those are my theories. Again, I don't know if anything scientifically would back that up, but that's just a theory. Anyway, now that we're six months down the line and I do feel like I understand my skin and how it works, I am planning to make that how I avoid a post-pill acne video. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment because I'm very keen to share everything I've learned over the course of the whole journey. And obviously I'm not perfect. I do still have some spots, but my goodness, it's so much more manageable. Like it's so, like I'm so much more able to control it or like influence it, you know? The worst thing is when you feel like you can't influence what's happening. Okay, this is like the least sexy part. And I've made whole videos on discharge, so. I have body odor now. I realized that this must be connected to my hormones because I always thought of myself as someone that just didn't really smell that bad. Like, you know, I could forget to put on deodorant for the day and I wouldn't be worried. I'd be like, unless I was like pouring sweat whilst working out, I wouldn't be worried about how I smelled. If I forget to deodorize now, just don't hang out with me. And you know, this is keeping all the other factors the same. I wash as much as I used to. I shave as often as I used to. And yet somehow I can smell pretty bad now. So just so you know, <laughs> you might have completely different um, like a body sweat scent, which I just was absolutely not ready for at all. I saw another woman comment something on my uh, previous video or on a TikTok or something. And I was like, oh, 
you're right, my body odor has changed completely. Some people were asking as well if I noticed any change in my digestion, and unfortunately the answer is no. My digestion is completely unpredictable. I have no idea what triggers what. Um, I'm obviously slightly triggered by stress and definitely triggered by gluten. Beyond that, no clue. I tend to feel worse when I have a lot of fiber. I do notice that as well. I tend to be a lot better at digestion, ironically, if I have less fiber, fewer whole grains, <laughs> and I'm generally eating a bit more processed food. I actually have a much better time with my stomach. But nothing really about my experience of my IBS has changed since coming off the pill. I'm just gonna quickly go back and see if there were any comments on my previous video about anything I should like talk about or like refer to. Oh, um, there are people asking what I'm gonna do for contraception, and I'm still planning on getting uh, the five-year copper coil really want to do it soon but obviously like I didn't want to do it during lockdown I just I know that the doctors do want people coming in but like um my doctors was like a, a big vaccination center and I just don't want to put that additional pressure on I know obviously I probably should have just done it regardless but I just felt a bit like uh, about it all now we're six months down the line and lockdown's easing off I think I'm gonna look into it now to be honest I've just been not very much in a rush to get any fixed form of contraception because if I'm honest, I feel a slight resentment towards men <laughs> about the fact that for them, the contraception is wearing a condom potentially from a few minutes to an hour or two. It depends on what your sex life's like, but you know, they, they put on a condom and they only have to wear it for a little bit. And then that's their only thing about contraception and yet so many men kick up such a fuss about that and yet I've been putting artificial chemicals into my body for eight, nine, ten years of my life and then now I'm looking to get a fixed metal piece in my cervix and I don't know, nothing about that feels empowering to me at the moment. It's funny as well, Jack's like an absolute angel about it all, he's like just don't mind, it's all fine, whatever works for you but yes I feel guilt about making those choices for myself which is madness when I think about the ongoing compromise that I made through all those years of dating prior. What is very evident from the comments on my last video is that every contraceptive works differently for everyone. There are some people who loved the pill, some people who hated their pill, some people who loved the coil, some people who hated the coil. It's just like a case of personal taste. So other than in January, I think it's worth saying as well that in all my other cycles, my moods have been like pretty much exactly correlated with where I am at in my cycle. And on top of that, like very manageable. Like January was an absolute outlier in my overall uh, coming off the pill experience. And yeah, as I said, my cycle has been super regular other than that, so fine. <laughs> like I can absolutely handle that. And the other thing that I mentioned in my previous video that actually hasn't come to fruition, so I should definitely mention it, is uh, weight and any weight fluctuation. Weight is a very weird subject for me. I definitely feel very dysmorphic at the moment. I bloat really heavily during and before my period. It's fine, I can handle that. But I have um, not lost any weight as far as I'm aware. I don't weigh myself actually, so this is a pointless comment. I'm not really sure like where my weight's at. I don't weigh myself. I try and remove all parameters because it's not very good for me. I haven't noticed my body change in any way, but then coming from me, that could mean anything. No one else has noticed my body change in any way. So I would say it's unlikely that I've lost weight. I work out the same amount as I did before. I eat the same as I did. Um, in fact, I probably eat a bit better at the moment because I've been cooking mainly for myself and because I live with Jack, we cook together and generally it's stuff that I would make normally. But yeah, I've not noticed any noticeable change. I noticed my arms uh, de-puff a bit, like I mentioned that in the video before. But otherwise, yeah, I just fluctuate with bloating uh, during my cycle but it's exactly as you'd predict. If you read up on like on your menstrual cycle and when you bloat and when you don't bloat, I correlate with that exactly. I feel like I don't really have much else to add to this video, but I will say finally, I mentioned that I got chest acne and back acne. Back acne, not fun at all, would not recommend. Apparently it's not that visible, but like I can feel texturally it's just not good. So I haven't managed to see many results with my back yet, but my chest has really benefited from using a salicylic acid body wash. Uh, which I use just like in the shower after I've done my normal um, like wash, I just put a bit on my chest area and then I wash it off obviously and then moisturize with aloe vera gel afterwards. So that's really worked. I will link one below. And yeah, that's all I've really got to say on that. It feels strange that there's not more to say, but actually I think that's probably a very good thing. I would like to get to the bottom of whatever happens when I'm stressed because it's just really not good. <laughs> but beyond that, like, 
yeah, I'm, I'm very happy off the pill. It's been a much, overall a much easier ride than it was before and it's been very nice. On the whole, I'm just really glad that I tried it and I came off it and I'm feeling very satisfied with that decision. I will maybe make a year update if there's actually anything to add, but to be honest, I don't think there'll be that much. Um, maybe I'll do like a coil update <laughs> at some point. But yeah, I, whatever I do next, I plan to put no hormones into me. That's been a big chatty video. Thanks for watching. I'm meeting Rosianna for a walk in a bit. If you don't follow Rosianna, you should, she's great. Also, we can use the comments for like sharing research, insight, advice, commentary, just like if you wanna get info or like talk about your own experiences and get advice or help, like leave everything in the comments. We can make it like a proper chat. I just feel like that'd be really nice because you know, everyone has different experiences and different bodies. So yeah, pop your queries or your comments or look for advice in the comments and I'm sure other people will reply and share with you what they know. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you are new around here, please hit subscribe or hit the bell notification if you wanna be notified when I upload or share anything exciting. I've got some fun projects in the works. There's some good shit happening. I will see you in my next video.